is talk about the United States of America from 1783 to the present. And the argument I want to make is if you look at how we have behaved over time, we have behaved according to the dictates of my theory. None of you have been educated to think this way because you grew up in liberal America where we tell ourselves all these uh, false tales about our history where we're portrayed as noble people who do nothing but good on the world stage and so forth. So that's not the way it's operated over time. Let's go back to 1783. In the beginning, the United States was comprised of 13 measly colonies strung out along the Atlantic seaboard. What happened uh, over the next 70 or so years is that the United States marched from the Atlantic seaboard to the Pacific Ocean. We murdered huge numbers of Native Americans. We stole their land. We went to war with Mexico and stole from them what is the southwest of the United States. We invaded Canada in 1812 for the express purpose of incorporating Canada into the United States. The British and the Canadians worried throughout the 19th century that we were going to pay them a return visit because they knew that we had a voracious appetite. Much of the Caribbean would today be American were it not for the slavery issue. The southern states were desperate to expand into the Caribbean to make all sorts of territory in that part of the world, part of the United States of America. And what prevented it was the northern states did not want any more slaveholding states in the Union. As you well know, sugar was the main industry in the Caribbean, and sugar was a labor-intensive industry. That meant there were huge numbers of slaves in the Caribbean, and the northern states did not want more slaveholding states. So not only did we have our gun sites on the Pacific Ocean, we also had our gun sites to the north on Canada, and we had our gun sites to the south. There's no country in modern history that has a record of expansion that comes close to ours. It's no accident that when Adolf Hitler went into the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941, for the next few months he talked frequently about doing in the Soviet Union what the United States did in North America. That's how the United States was created. A very powerful state, very aggressive state. Second thing we had to do to establish hegemony in this hemisphere is we had to get the European empires out. You all remember President James Monroe in 1823, the Monroe Doctrine? He basically told the European great powers, this is our hemisphere. We're eventually going to throw you out. We're not powerful enough to do it, but you're leaving. It's just a matter of when. And once you leave, you are not welcome back here. <laughs> Again, there are enough of us in this audience to remember the Cold War. You remember how we used to go ballistic when the Soviets would do certain things in places like Cuba? Talk about putting missiles in Cuba, troops in Cuba building a naval base at Cienfuegos. This was not acceptable to us. This was our hemisphere. We were bent on establishing regional hegemony. So my point is that by 1900, uh, in the aftermath of the Spanish-American War, the United States had established regional hegemony. And as I said before, this is the only regional hegemon in modern history. Now, you have two goals. One is to establish regional hegemony, and two is to make sure there's no peer competitor. What happened in the 20th century? There were four potential peer competitors. Imperial Germany, Imperial Japan, Nazi Germany, and the former Soviet Union. The United States played a key role in putting all four of those countries on the scrap heap of history. The United States had no intention of allowing any of those countries to dominate Europe, Asia, or in the case of the Soviet Union, Eurasia. We entered World War II in April, excuse me, World War I in April 1917, when it looked like the Germans might win that war, and we helped finish off the Germans. If I had an extra hour, I could give you my lecture on how I think the United States played the critical role in tipping the balance in favor of the French and British against the Germans. 
In World War II, we defeated Japan almost single-handedly, and we played a key role, although the Soviets played the key role, in defeating Nazi Germany in Europe. And of course, during the Cold War, we played the principal role in containing the Soviet Union, and then we helped usher it down the toilet bowl when the Cold War ended. And we were glad to see it go. And after it ended, we made it clear to the rest of the world that we had no intention of giving up American primacy. So the United States has a very clear record of not tolerating peer competitors. And we've actually been quite explicit about that. So the argument I'm making to you is if you look at the basic theory that I laid out and you look at how the United States has really behaved since 1783, it fits very neatly with the theory. 